Hi, my name's Martin Fearon. I'm 28. I have two sisters, born and raised in Medway, Kent, actor, filmmaker. I've had an on again, off again relationship with the military, gamer, comic addict, blah, 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 blah. But before I was this person I am today, we need to go back. July 16th, 2010, the date that changed my life forever. I left my house to head to the shops, saying goodbye to my mum as I left. Five minutes later, I would return to her being on the floor and my stepdad on the phone to paramedics. Eight hours after that, she passed away. A year went by and my cousin, granddad and nan all passed away within weeks of each other, all from my mother's side of the family. A few months after that, my auntie Karen from my dad's side passed away. One of the kindest women I could possibly ask for in my life. Depressing, right? Tell me about it. <laughs> this is my dad, Mark Fearon. Born 10th of May 1960 in the city of Liverpool with a great amount of siblings. <laughs> uh, Catholics. Joined the Navy January 1978. Married my mum in 1982. Married my stepmum, Catherine, in 2007. Obviously, him and my mum divorced first. And in December 2015, had major brain surgery. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. That escalated quickly. So, let's start from the beginning. In November 2015, I was living in Cyprus with my girlfriend at the time. We are just getting ready to head out for work drinks when I get a phone call from my dad. The conversation is going normally until he mentions he needs to head to hospital. Surprised to why this is the first time I heard about it, I asked... Why are you going to hospital? Uh, oh, it's um, I, just a brain tumour. My heart stopped and nothing around me was registering. All I could think about was... Not another person, not another loss. As you can imagine, I was confused. Why was my dad only telling me this now? You see, my dad and my stepmom Catherine were worried about telling me because I may have had a history of going off the rails here and there and they were worried that this might push me over the edge. <laughs> No idea where they got that from. I had the MRI and it was discovered that I had a massive brain tumour. Uh, it was over 25% of my brain, my um, speech and a few other things deteriorated exponentially, quite considerably after that, to the point where I couldn't basically do anything. Anyway, so we went into the hospital, they, they operated, they took it all away, and unfortunately it didn't go as well as they planned. They normally say it takes about two to three hours. Eleven and a half hours later, um, which gives you an indication just how difficult the operation was, but it involved taking the skull, removing the skull, doing what they needed to do and then putting it back. Somewhere during along that I got an infection. Didn't know at the time, but I got an infection. I was released from hospital on Christmas Eve. Um, and it was great to get home. Within two, three days, we realised that I was not very well. And I was straight off to hospital again. From then, it's taken two to three years of going in and out of hospital, trying to sort out all the issues. But it could have been worse. Um, I'm still here. The surgery, although a success, left my dad nearly losing his leg due to infection. With an infected leg and over 25% of his brain now missing, recovery was a long road ahead. But a road he conquered. I was very lucky. Um, all the, the, the operations, the physical stuff was done and then it was a matter of trying to sort out my, my cognitive issues. 
um, my understanding of what's happened, um, what I'm capable of doing and what I'm no longer capable of doing. Uh, I forget the words. I can see the word in my head, but I can't um, articulate the word. And that is frustrating. And when that happens, I get more and more frustrated and then it gets worse because I'm also now partially sighted. I can no longer see on my right side. Uh, I, can, I can see my hand. If I keep my eyes straight, I see my hand. I can no longer see this hand. All that's gone. One of the biggest reasons my dad recovered so well was the support he received from various doctors. And of course, his wife, Catherine, who like any good naval captain was willing to go down with her ship. But there was someone more important, someone who was there 24 seven. My replacement, my mortal enemy, the new number one son. Yes, that's right, the f cat. I spent an awful lot of time on my own upstairs. I couldn't even come downstairs for months at a time. I was uh, completely, not just housebound, but uh, from upstairs. And so my wife, who's not a great pet lover, got me this, uh, this stray on the basis that the cat needed as much love and attention as I did. So, um, she bought me this cat and that cat has not left my side in four years. Uh, I don't know what I would have done if it wasn't for him. As you can see, Aero meant so much more to my dad's recovery as you or I could possibly know. And as much as I'm jealous that he's now the favourite, I am thankful for him. The little The reason he was a therapy cat was because it made your dad think about the cat and not about him. Mm. He had to make sure he was okay. He had to make sure Aero was okay, mm. not think about what he was going through. So he had to get you had to make a little den for him, didn't you? We did. A den. Because yeah. well, he was so was scared the, when he we, came to we us. We did a uh, because I couldn't move downstairs. What's the next question? Um. Now I can't make a film about my dad without mentioning his extraordinary naval career. From the Cod War to Ops in the Middle East, he's been around the block. Very fortunate. I've been mobilised by the Navy in the Gulf four times and that has been quite an experience. I spent over three years in theatre, off and on, and yeah, there were some unusual events during that time. One of which was the Captain Phillips uh, episode. Yeah, that Captain Phillips. Bringing him up, explaining exactly what was happening in his immediate area. And he said, no, uh, we're an American ship. My crew are well trained and we will, we will carry on. I explained what would happen if he did carry on the course. And he dismissed it. Everything okay? I don't like the look of that. My dad's job in the Gulf was to monitor ships and make sure they weren't going too off course, which would then get them in trouble with pirates. After many phone calls and warnings with my old man, Captain Phillips decided to ignore him and go his own route. And guess what? The filmmakers even put him in the movie. There he is. Based on a true story, my I started making this film about my dad's recovery from his tumour. But as time went on, it's turned into something different. It's just turned into a film about him and honestly how he helped me. See, when my mum died, it f***ed me up. Being through dad's recovery process with him, I was recovering too. And he helped me and supported me through a lot of things that he didn't even know were going on. So dad, thank you. Thank you for being a great husband, brother, friend, granddad, and most importantly, dad, to all of us. Never change. Also, could I borrow 50 quid? <laughs>